Welcome back to another edition of Bourbon Kingdom. I'm David. And I'm Zach. And today we are going to be discussing uh, seven tips and tricks to uh, know if you're kind of new to this this game we call bourbon or whiskey or hunting or finding or... Well, it, it's it's we're not going to do a hunting video per se because we've actually already done that. We have done a hunting but video. But this is more of your kind of new-ish to whiskey yeah. or you're new to the whole kind of game of it, I guess, per se. Because there's a lot of things that, at the end of the day, a lot of big and small distillers try to sell you on that's... Honestly, you don't need to worry about, you know, and like, I, 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 I don't know how, hey, how we'll talk, it. Th- we'll talk through it as we, yeah, as we do exactly. This. Uh, uh, before we go though, uh, Hey, I need a pour. Oh, I almost chose that. Dang on it. Yeah. We were literally sitting here saying, I said, if you can pick the bottle, I said, I'll give you the bottle. And, uh, he guessed angel share, which I almost went with angel share. I won't lie. So well, I almost went close. with that. So yeah. Uh, this is a heaven Hill select stock. Toasted. Oh, by the way, last week we went to Heaven Hill and uh, the day they op- opened back up and we did their tasting tour. If you have never done it, I uh, highly recommend you do it. Yeah, it's uh, it's awesome. And don't waste your time with anything other than the Heaven Hill Experience <laughs> bourbon. Yeah. Just skip right over everything else. Yeah, the rest of it. Eh, it's yeah. not so good. No. So, I mean, the, the barrel proof was good. Yeah, but it wasn't as good as the first time we went through. Yeah, but it was still it was still decent. But that okay, I, I, we won't definitely better than the first two releases this year. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, before we start this list though, because we do have seven things we need to talk about. Yeah, before we start, uh, need you to do me a couple of things. First off, go ahead and hit that like button, and go ahead and leave a comment saying you know whatever you think's a good tip or trick for you know new or or even experienced whiskey drinkers to try to do or whatever else that could help and then if you already haven't go ahead and hit that subscribe button yeah follow us on the channel for more fun videos from where we're sitting here you know literally drinking whiskey off the shelf yeah so anyways i, I had already pre-poured mine mine's well or 12 just so you know uh, that's what i'm drinking tonight you chose wrongly i i, I did do you wrong. get the movie reference yes but we won't talk about it <laughs> uh all right um so ahead, number sorry. one yeah, number ahead, one sorry. on the list is don't worry about how you drink it like if you're new to whiskey uh there are a lot of people who are snobby about how you drink whiskey uh they're like if you don't drink it neat you might as well have a seat uh <laughs> who says that <laughs> give me names and numbers because i'm gonna give them crap right now <laughs> over youtube about that. <laughs> All right, uh, full disclosure, this is like video six tonight. So, yeah, it's been a lot. Uh, we have drank a lot tonight. Um, True. Not drunk, but um, I am feeling good. So this should be fun. Uh, sure. the, the truth is, don't worry about how you drink it. If you like if you like bourbon on the rocks, yeah. please drink it on the rocks yeah. because it's going to get you even further in bourbon. Uh, when I started, it was on the rocks. I was a rocks guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still enjoy it on the rocks now, like, uh, I don't always drink it on the rocks, but I I enjoy it um, that way, and it's okay. Even if you want to put it in a cocktail or you want to mix it with Coke, it's yeah. it's okay. I mean, just buy cheaper bourbon if you're going to do that. But I mean, there are oh, lots yeah. of people who I mean, even I, let's just say there's a Russell Ten sitting right here. Russell Ten, mix that with a Coke if you want to, or put it yeah. in a cocktail. It's totally fine. This is. Fifty dollars, you know. No, like, it's less than that. It's like thirty, forty bucks. Yeah, it's probably it probably yeah. is thirty five, forty bucks. Yeah. Whatever it is. So um Yeah. But I, still like and I think I've told this story before. I, I first off, I totally agree. Drink whiskey however you want to. Don't ever let somebody sit there and criticize you, regardless of the of the proof, of the pour, of the cost of it. Drink whatever you want to drink, drink it however you like to. Because it's let's be real, if you're gonna spend your own money, nobody can tell you what to do with it. Yeah, okay. Try a lot of different bourbons, okay? Or, or, I'm sorry, try a lot of different whiskeys. So, don't just sit on one thing and say, I'm only drinking Kentucky bourbon, or I'm only drinking Tennessee whiskey, or I'm only drinking rye, or scotch, or whatever it is. 
try them all and don't be afraid of mash bills. Don't be afraid. Whenever you see something that's a high rye or you see something that's a weeder or a hun literally 100% molted rye, don't be afraid of that. Try, try it all. It doesn't hurt you to try something. And if you call whiskey bourbon or rye bourbon or sour mash bourbon and somebody corrects you on it, tell them to shut up and just get out of your face. Yeah. It, it, it literally doesn't hurt you to try whatever it is. Yeah. It, you're only benefiting yourself down the road. I know a lot of people who have, who have been strictly on Kentucky bourbon their whole life. And then I'm like, well, why don't you go try something different? Introduce them to a little bit of scotch. And I'm not a big scotch guy. Yeah, I'm not a big scotch guy. I, either, I introduce but... them to a little bit of scotch and they're like, I'm off the Kentucky bourbon train. And I'm totally riding scotch. Or, from here on out. or being a snob. I mean, we all hate Tennessee. I realize that. <laughs> we all hate Tennessee. But their whiskey is good. And so I, I don't discriminate uh, from Tennessee whiskey, man. Jack Daniels puts out a good, good, good product. I mean, several good products. As a matter of fact, I mean. You're looking at all my stuff I have from Jack all, Daniels over there. Yeah, and over it's, here. it's all good. And so yeah, it's, don't, it's really good. don't be afraid to try to try that. I, I agree. Yep. I totally uh, agree. Number three, uh, don't be fooled by the packaging. Uh, I wish I had it here uh, because the number one on the list <laughs> is Basil Hayden toasted uh, yeah. toasted barrel. Uh, yeah. It would be here. The packaging, great job. They did the packaging. They're marketing on mm -hmm. it. Great. People wanted it. People pined for it. And then you tasted it. And I mean, let's be honest. A lot of disappointment. Typically. A lot of disappointment. And look, there's in in what's crazy is a lot of these packagings cost a decent amount of money. Another another one of them, and, and we like the last one we had, the little book, Chapter Five, Booker's. You have a really nice box. We tolerated the last. one. I liked it. He not so much. It has the nice little wooden box. You have a nice little card in there. It has a nice little story with it, and but then you're paying. For that packaging, yeah. you're paying for that box, you're paying for that story. Yeah. And that's the other thing too. Not just looking at how the bottle is dressed and, and the label and stuff like that. Yeah. It's also the story that goes along with it. Whenever you find some, you know, this distillery found some great recipe that oh. was in the attic of their great grandfather. Oh, that was, another good that example. That was their great grandfather. I almost forgot about this example. But Evan Williams is lot six. Square six? Square six, whatever it is. <laughs> It might as well be in the lot toilet, because uh, <laughs> it was not for the price. It was not worth the money that it was. Yep, pretty much. Uh, I'm was, sorry, I'm just sitting here thinking Buffalo Trace Lot B. Um, <laughs> oh. No, we're not talking about Lot B. We're talking about Square Six. Square Square Six. And, That's and by one the way, of those packaging. I but, like but, the bottle. I like. Yeah, yeah. yeah actually, you no, know, I love the bottle. Yeah. I love that white, black, and gold kind of thing. Yeah. I, I like how they did the little. I, I don't. I love how they even did the little map where they showed the the so square cool. of the yeah. six. So yeah. cool. It 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 did really well. It just yeah. sucks the bourbon wasn't good. Yeah. So. But anyway, so I I think for number four though. And this is something that I find more and more and more with newer drinkers whenever I see them at a bar, is don't be don't be scared by the proof, whatever the proof is on the bottle. You know, I've seen a lot of people where they're like, well, I, I don't really only want to drink 80, 90 proof. And that's totally fine. There's a lot of great bourbons out there or whiskeys or rye that are around that proof. But don't be afraid to go try something that's in the low hundreds or 120, 130, whatever it is. I, I tell everybody all the time, a lot, a lot of times whenever I see somebody who's like that, I tell everybody, go try a rare breed, you know, bourbon where it's like 116 and it doesn't drink like 116 proof at all. It drinks like somewhere in the high 90s to me at least. And I think the other thing that you got to think about with, with going through the gambit of proofs is you learn where your, where your sweet spot is. Sure. And so... The more I'm, the more we've drank, the more you've drank. The like you start to learn. Like for me, the hundred, the hundred and fifteen to hundred and twenty-five is like right in my wheelhouse. I love, oh, yeah. I love that. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't discriminate against the one twenty-fives, the one thirties, the one thirty-fives, and stuff like that. Because even in those, you there are things that you like in that. 
And and so you you just don't be scared of the proof, but also uh, it helps you learn what where the proof range is for you that you really like. Yeah, like if I'm being honest, around 115, 116, like that is a money proof for me. If if like, drink, I I, yeah. I love having that proof. Now, with all that being said, Dave and I were just talking about this earlier. I am aggressively looking for that new Jack Daniels uh, limited release where yeah. they're all above 140 yeah. proof. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be good or not, but I know I want it. We're going to try and, it. And, and I'm sure. not in any way, shape, form worried about that proof. I just know I was literally drinking on that bottle just a second ago, and it's so freaking good that it's like, and, of course. And for me, like there are also some low proofs like the Sherry Cast finish that I like and Breckenridge or Doc mm-hmm. Swenson's. Those are like sure. in, in the mid nineties. Yeah, and, and they're those, right. those are really good, and they're just good like daily drinkers. So so you know, don't get fooled by the proof. That's yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. It and don't worry about chasing high proof either. Don't just because something's high proof or something's low proof, it doesn't mean it's good. Correct. Find something, just try a bunch of different varieties, try stuff that works for you, not only just in cocktails, but on the rocks or if it's you know, neat, whatever it is. Yeah, what, so. whichever way. Uh, number five is price. Watch what you spend. I mean, the truth is. Uh, not all expensive whiskey is good. Not yeah. all not all expensive bourbon is good. Uh, there are very good cheap bourbons out there. Uh, matter of fact, I, I, let's just take this Evan Williams single barrel. Oh, that's one of the best examples. Thirty yeah. bucks, twenty eight yeah. to thirty bucks. Yeah, this is good stuff. It's good on the rocks. It's mm-hmm. good neat. It's good in a cocktail. It's good with Coke. It's good, uh, like it's just good. And so uh, you don't always have to spend a lot of money in order to make to mean it's good. Yeah, and realistically, with price right now in in this, you know, in whiskey and bourbon, rye, it's these companies are figuring out that we're willing to spend a lot of money on stuff, and and it's not just allocated stuff. Yeah. Like stuff that sits on shelves for weeks, days, or every single day. Yep. People are willing to spend $100, $120, $150 on stuff. It's crazy thinking that. And sometimes I understand why prices of bottles are expensive. Craft distilleries are going to charge more because they have to. Yeah. Like a good Russell's 10-year pick. Like, let's be real. Most of the time, that would be an $80 bourbon from a lot of distiller or from a lot of, like, Small craft distilleries. Yes, yes. But since Wild Turkey is such a huge, you know, it, it's such just a massive operation, it can charge really cheap prices. It can. And that's great. I mean, cheap whiskey can be really, really good. Right. That's why we did a video over it, over it previously where we did our favorite 10 bottles under 30 bucks. Yes, or at yes, 30 bucks. yes, yes. So, for sure. It's all good. Um, number six for us, though. I think this is arguably one of the most important things getting into whiskey. Do do this with friends. And the re, and, and I say this for mainly two reasons. A, this is a great opportunity to meet people. And I'm not talking about just going at a bar and sitting and right. talking to people about whiskey. You can do that. Literally, we, you know, I, I, I'm part of a breakfast club where we literally, a bunch of random people, we just go down there and we drink whiskey on a Saturday morning and we talk and we have a great time. It's awesome. But you can meet some really awesome and great people through this brown water. Yes. I, I mean, it's it's literally so some, some of the best friends, some of the dearest friends I have is through this stuff. And it's awesome to be able to share it. Like him and I have known each other for, you know, a decade plus. Yeah. Before we ever, before I kind of introduced him to it. And literally, it's just something more that we can bond over and have a good time over. We, and- we did this bourbon kingdom bourbon channel because we wanted to drink together yeah yeah it, that, that's really what it is and and the other reason why i kind of say this is do this with friends don't get me wrong you're not going to drink with somebody every day like right. i understand that if someone wants to come home after a long day of work you want to have a pour i get that i also think it's very important not to do this by yourself all the time because you got to watch you know drinking too much alone because let's be real this is something that can go awry and go down a dark path, and nobody wants that for anybody. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. 
you know, it, it's, the brown water is good, but the brown water can be bad. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it can be bad and yeah. it can do a lot of harm. Yeah. So that's why I would say, you know, have pours with friends. You know, I'm, I'm literally going to be sending out a message here literally tonight to, to a bunch of guys at work. I mean, like, hey, it's about that time I have you all over and have a pour or two. And just it's a good bonding opportunity. Yeah. It's just it's an awesome time. Yeah. So uh, and then the last uh, number seven is this is a marathon, not a sprint. If you're just getting into this, you don't have to have every bottle in oh yeah in in two weeks. You know what I'm saying? No, uh, there's... you don't need a lot of bottles starting out. Uh, I have somebody who texts me all the time who sends me pictures of what do you think about this bottle? What do you think about this bottle? What do you think about this bottle? And they're just now getting into it, and I'm like, well, slow down a little bit. Yeah, like don't worry about that. That I know that looks like a cute bottle. Again. The packaging tells you that it's a cute bottle and it's one that you want. Please yep. put me on your shelf. Please put me on your shelf. But you don't have to do that. Get, you know, just work up. You know, I I started two and a half years ago, two, two and sure. a half years ago. And I still don't have a ton of bottles. Like, I'm not, I don't have this. <laughs> like, I mean, this has been years and years and years of. Yeah, of, th- this of is a gym. very, it like. What you all see behind us right now, this is a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of it's years lot. It's, of and of, so of getting stuff. And, and so you, you know, he's he's in this marathon, and he understands yeah. this marathon, um, and it builds on itself as you start getting more bourbons, and you start you start mm-hmm. finding out what you like. You start getting more and more and more, and that's cool. Like, but don't feel like you have to just because you have four or five of them on your shelf. That's not a bad thing. There are four no. or five things that you've either tried or you like or whatever. And so just be happy with that. I mean, it's it, it definitely, there's always going to be someone ahead of you and there's always yeah. going to be somebody behind you. And that's just the, the facts of life. Yeah, just don't, you know, there's a lot of guys who have that fear of missing out. Like ultimately. Oh, FOMO is real. Yeah, it, and that's, everybody, it, uh, I'm not. We're like, all, I mean, no, we're not immune to it. <laughs> yeah, like whenever I'm at work and I see guys going out and getting bottles and I can't leave, and I'm just like, man, I, I this sucks that I'm not out there with you getting a bottle, but hey, you know what? Congrats. Like, I'm really happy for yeah, you. Yeah, we've talked about it before. He went, yep. he was at Wild Turkey one day. He got to Wild Turkey, got a bottle of Russell's 13, yeah. and, and called me and was like, I'm going. And no lie, I got in my car and drove because of fear of missing out and i still missed out even with my fear of missing out and so this is true my unicorn slipped through my fingers again this is true uh it i see a lot of people too that will go out and spend a lot of money and they'll go out and get stuff that they can get all the time and i don't blame them i i I don't i don't necessarily blame you for wanting everyday shelfers that you can find at Total Wine Liquor Barn or Walmart or Kroger, wherever you go and you buy from. I would also tell you, try to go out and try that stuff before you buy. Yeah. Because you'll yeah. then wound up. I have a mul- I have multiple shelves of bottles that I'll probably never drink again that I'll try to sample out to people so that way it doesn't go to waste. And that way people can experience it and have it and try yeah. it. Because I went and bought it because of packaging or because I heard somebody say it was good or because I was interested because I heard it was sourced from somebody and it turned out not to be good. Yeah. So just take your time with it. Happens all the time. No, it it really does. You'll find that you can really rack up a lot of bottles that you don't want. It's not that they're bad. They're just not your thing, not your jam. And you just don't want to do that. Like it it just, because all of a sudden you're looking there and you're like, I have a full bar of stuff I don't want. And I'll be honest with you, you guys see this whole this whole setup back here. There's a lot of bottles back here that I bought that I thought like, man, they're gonna be good. And they're not. Yeah. So it's just the truth. Yeah, it is. So hey, listen, tell us what what you would do. Like what oh, are yeah. what are some tips and tricks to help out the the guys behind us? Like you know, we're all on different different bourbon journeys, different whiskey mm-hmm. journeys, and so that's very true. You know, if if you can impart some wisdom on some people, please do. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is our kind of seven things that we decided that uh, we thought were important. Um, obviously, you have things that you think are important to yeah. remember when you're when you're dealing with bourbon and, and whiskey, and so um, please share it with us so that we can kind of 
throw that out for for people and and, and totally. show them. So, you know. Uh, and if there's anything else you guys want, like literally we did this video because you all kind of requested it yeah. in the comments or private messages yeah. or emails or whatever else. And so if there's anything else that you all want, just, I mean, leave it in the comments below. Let yeah. us know. So we appreciate it. Yep, for sure. Well, till the next time, we'll see you. See you.